Hi everyone, this is Steve from the BTI Web Services team. Today we'll be looking at Spring Roo. Roo is a rapid application development project written by the Spring team. To start off with, we'll go into our Spring Source tool suite. We'll create a new Spring Roo project. We're going to be creating our dictionary service. And what's going to be happening is the Spring Roo shell will be running in the background. And what that'll do, it'll actually create files for us as we go. So what Roo wants us to do is always type hint uh, to get a hint as to what to do next. Um, so what it's going to tell us to do is create a uh, persistent setup. So if we type persistence, um, and if you do control space, it'll actually auto-complete for you, um, and it'll keep uh, helping us along as we go, go about. So right now we have our database set up. Um, we have a bunch of different options. We have Derby, um, Google App Engine, Hypersonic in Memory. Um, right now I have my SQL running in the background, so we'll go ahead and use that. And then we choose our provider as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and use Hibernate. Um, then we also have a bunch of different options. So our host name uh, is localhost. Our um, database name is test. Our um, username is root. And our password is uh, password. So this will create our persistence uh, setup in the background. And the next thing that it's going to want us to do is actually uh, uh, set up our classes. So what, what it tells it to, us to do is use the entity. Um, so we'll type in entity um, class and we'll say um, domain word. Um, what we also are going to want to do is say hint. It'll say, hey, uh, let's start creating fields for our word. Um, so we have our different options here. We have, you know, Boolean, strings, um, sets, references, which is a reference to a, another object. Um, but we're going to go ahead and create a string. And we'll say our field name is name. And once again, we have a lot of different options here. So we can specify what column we want. Um, we can also say, you know, the word has a size minimum of five or um, all we care about right now is just the fact that the name isn't null. Um, actually, another thing, if this is the dictionary, let's say uh, this has to be a unique value as well. Um, so we'll say true and we'll say, um, oops, say true here and our, we'll say unique. Uh, true. So we'll create that and so what it does is it actually updates our um, word Java object um, and actually when we created that word entity in the background it actually created all these aspect J files. Um, so as you can see we've it automatically generated our uh, our ID and the version um, for our word object. And it also creates all these um, getters and setters for our different options as well. Um, so another thing is we don't actually have to work in the root shell. So if we wanted to create our um, definition, we'll say definition, uh, and we'll hit that. And we can actually just add our annotations right here. So we'll just say not null. Um, when we save that, you can see that Roo is actually listening um, to our Java files, and it actually updated the aspect J file in the background as well. Um, so you can see our aspect J file actually generated our get name, set name, get definition, and set definition. So another thing that is useful is uh, JSON support. So if we type JSON uh, and choose all, it creates a new aspect J file for us, which is Roo JSON, and it'll convert our domain object over to uh, JSON and from JSON to a word object. The next thing that we want to do is create a controller for our application. So if we type in controller, we'll say all package, we will say controller, and that's it. So it'll actually create an application for us in the background. And since we actually created a um, the JSON support, the web service can actually support uh, JSON. So when we look at our controller, 
we will see the word controller, which is uh, just blank right now. Um, what they really care about is the aspect J file. So all the generated code is in the aspect J file, which is here. So this will actually create um, two different views. There's actually a UI component to it, and down here we have our web service component component to it. Um, and so what it looks for is accept application JSON headers. So in this case, we're getting a word object by ID. Um, we're getting a list of all words. We can post words, and we'll kind of go through that. Uh, another thing that we want to do is we want to use our um, web service test. So what we can do is actually create a, um, a new view. So if we type in web MVC, we'll say install view, we'll say path is um, ext, title is ext, ext js, ws. And then we will say view name is index. So when we create that, it'll create all the files for us. Um, what we want to do is import our ext library. So if we go into our source directory, go into main web app, uh, we I've got my files already queued up. If I can get to it, <laughs> uh, here we go. So I'll import my ext.js library into this directory. Go ahead and copy that. And then when we go into our views, go into our views, yeah, we've got our ext index.jspx, which is the generated file for us. Um, I've also got this code ready to go to import our ext, um, uh, ext code. So if we save this and we'll start up our server, uh, just need to right click, run as, run on server. So this will take a little time, about 30 seconds, to actually boot up. And what we'll show is uh, the different web services uh, available to us, um, which we'll kind of look at again. So we've got our post. Uh, we can do a single word entry. Um, it takes in the request body, and it'll actually call the from JSON to word, and then persist that word for us. Once again, we've got our JSON array object. Um, which will create um, a bunch of different words based on our um, on our request body. So here's a little app. Let's go into Google Chrome, get a little bit more localhost 8080 um, dictionary. So this is the default. Um, framework that Ruse sets up for us. What we can actually do is we can use their framework for um, uh, setting up a couple things. So if we type um, name is test uh, test def, uh, we can save that. We can create another word um, test two another def. Um, we can list all the words. Uh, we can also edit or delete words, um, so we'll delete this, say OK, we'll edit this, definition, save that. Um, let's go over to our ext.js web service, and what we do here is we've got our words. Um, it actually maps up to that URI that's generated for us. Uh, we'll call the get method. And we've got one word in there for us right now. And you can see that the version number actually was updated as well since I edited that. So what we'll do now is do a post. Um, we'll say words. And our content is um, name uh, test3 definition. yet another definition. 
So when we test that, we get a 201 created status method message. Um, we'll go ahead and call to get again. Uh, we'll test that. We get our two methods or our two records. Um, what we can also do is delete a method, uh, delete a word rather. Uh, we've got our ID, which is one, call delete, and test that. We go ahead and call get. And we got a 404, which is resource not found, which is great because we deleted the word. So that's kind of a quick overview as to getting you started with uh, JSON support with Spring Roo. Uh, hopefully you guys have a good time with this. All right, have a good one. Bye.